you know, I'm going to be straight with you, boys. Um, in a world of increasing amounts of AI technology and increased um, computerization and automation of various industries and everything that we take for granted, it's always good to take a look back and uh, look at some of the goofy stuff that came up before us and remember that there were people thinking about the future as it currently stands way back in yesteryear and realize that maybe we should take some lessons to heart. I, uh, I'm definitely not currently thinking of the uh, self-driving Tesla cars that, um, that have resulted in several accidents, but you know, it, it's whatever. You know, in dark times like these, you just gotta remember this man, this very, very goofy man voiced by a very goofy dude who is very fun and still the best part of this entire thing. But anyway, let's go ahead and rock and roll. What's up, boys? Bob here. Welcome to a new Let's Play. This time for a new Ghost in the Shell game because unfortunately, those continue to dwindle more and more. You would not think so given the sheer brevity of this series, given how it's so gargantuan. Like, I'm talking several anime. You would not, you would not know how many anime this is actually spawned. I'm not even kidding about that. Inspired not only James Cameron, but also... um. Uh, the Wachiski sisters now uh, with the Matrix. Literally, they were directly inspired by Ghost in the Shell. But despite all that, the thing that was inspired by Ghost in the Shell has more games than the Ghost in the Shell series itself. I don't know how exactly we got here, but you know what? It is what it is. So today's topic is going to be Ghost in the Shell on the PS1. Now, this game is interesting. Yeah, I'm going to say interesting. Um, This has been a bit of a wild ride. In terms of, you think there'd be games in double digits? Oh my god, I wish there were. Seriously. There's three. There's the PS2 game, which I did. The PSP game, which I also did. You should uh, check out links down below. And now this game, which is on the PS1. I would like to everyone to think that, just keep this in mind. When I'm done with this game tonight, it's a short game. I will have done Let's Plays for every Ghost in the Shell game that exists. I'm not kidding. Now, that being said, though, there is one caveat, which is a not really old, but like a Steam game that came out in 2015 that was basically Call of Duty slash Overwatch, and it was dead within a year. We'll cover that more towards the end of the game, I'm sure. But just keep in mind that when I've done this game, we'll have done every single one. And I don't want to consider the fact that I'll technically be an expert on Ghost in a Shell video games. That is... A dire thought if there was one, but anyway, let's go ahead and deal with this. So, the Ghost of the Shell PS1 game. Apparently, this actually has had quite a bit more of influence on anime games than you would actually be led to believe. So, this actually dropped in December 7th, 1997, and was actually directly funded by the success of the Ghost of the Shell movie itself. Uh, also, side note, this will have been the oldest video game I've done on my channel. Yes, I don't often dip into 60-bit territory. I should do that more often. But this now actually predates even the Vampire Hunter D PS1 game I did several years ago. I don't know about my crowning achievements because I actually did fully complete the game, but you know, details. Anyway, um, so this is developed by Production IG itself and also a little studio, studio called Exact. I had to do a little bit of research to I just wanted to figure out what exactly Studio Exact is. You want to know? This is in-house at Sony. I'm not kidding. This, it's not the exact same studio, but yeah, this is apparently credited on Wikipedia as the same studio that would then go on to do Bloodborne. Um, crazy, I know, but that's what it's being credited as on Wikipedia, so got me. And yeah, this actually got a lot of positive uh, feedback back in the day, 97, when this came out. Um, log of reviews. Uh, the only real negative that I consistently got, some were actually saying it's the opposite problem, but um, people were saying that one of the criticisms of it was actually being too easy. I actually think that's a pretty relatively good criticism, considering that it lowers the skill floor to allow people to actually beat the game and, and, and actually, like, check it out, you know? Um, let's see. Oh, I also found on Wikipedia, apparently Game Informer rated this as one of the best anime game tie-ins ever. And I had to look at this list up because it's something from 2013, 2014, something like that. It also lists like Storm 3, a random Lupin game on a PS2, and there was something else kind of weird. One of the Dragon Ball Z games. I think it might have been Tenkaichi 3. 
No, it, it was it was one of the ten kaiju games. I don't remember which one, but it was a very weird article. I'll have to go look at it at some point. But anyhow, let's go ahead and stop dawdling. So go ahead and actually boot this game up for once. That'd be certainly pretty, pretty nice. And I can show you guys to write. There's a chance that with the increasingly younger audience I'm generating these days, first of all, I just turned 30. That is still a very cold thought in the back of my head. Second of all, you need to be bear witness to one of the absolute best sound effects in video games you will ever witness in your entire life. Not really. <laughs> this isn't really hyperbole by any stretch of the imagination. Look, for us old heads, this is basically the equivalent of like the THX sound effect when you get into a movie theater. I'm not really joking about that. Anyway, also we have movies? Also, I'm not sure what THQ actually had to do with this. Anyway, we'll go ahead and just remain silent for the movie. Right, I probably should have given it a light warning that there was some boobage in that intro, but as you can clearly see, it was there. It wasn't prolific or anything, but it was definitely there. So, a couple of things I want to kick off with, actually, before we go too far ahead. Now, if you looked at the intro, you might recognize a couple of things. First of all, this isn't the exact same art style that was actually in the uh, original Ghost of the Shell movie, which is what this is directly inspired by. No, this came out uh, like a two years after the fact, and there's some interesting tidbits I found out about it. Uh, the first being... Oh wow, how I completely missed my shilling. All right, before we actually move on, I'd like to uh, really hand fist a shilling. Please follow me on Twitch. We have a follower goal right now. If you follow me, we get to 300, I'll do Go Naruto games. Uh, 400, Melty Blood, 500, I'll do the uh, South American BT4. Anyway, so but that out of the way. Um, something I did learn actually is the fact that um, this game, the, the animation team, no, what am I trying to say? Not the animation team, it was the character designer. It's actually not the original one. Um, Apparently, the original art, the director for the movie, specifically went for a different look from how Motoko usually looks, um, such that it would actually look more fluid in the movie itself. Yeah, I forgot to give the Robo uh, Sex seizure warning. I'll do that in post. Not a big deal. We're moving kind of fast right now. Once we get into this game proper, it's going to be kind of nonstop because, well, the cutscenes will have pause buttons and there's, the gameplay goes by pretty quick. So, you know, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> not quite final stretch yet, Alex. So, yeah, so a couple things. Um, the character designer for this game is actually someone from, his name was Mamoru, let's see. The director for the movie, Mamoru Hoshi, doesn't make a return, but one character designer from Cowboy Bebop slash Wolf's Reign, Hiro Kawamoto, joined a team, giving Kusanagi a look way more similar to her manga depiction. And now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm usually not 
I mean, okay, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Motoko is absolutely gorgeous usually, especially in, in standalone complex. I've never really been too hot on her, her designs in like uh, the movie itself or Arise especially, but the one we have from this game is like genuinely, I think the word I would use is stunning. Like I was talking with Alex about this. I'm not an art major, so I can't really give the best like wording for it, but like this version of Motoko has like such personality about her, like the way she animates her facial expressions. There's like such character going on with this. And like genuinely, I'm not one to like romanticize the hell out of like 90s anime because I think it's kind of like what was our look for? Corny, overdone, overplayed by boomers. But like, no, genuinely, this I've already been directed that website before. Hair is very expressive. Thank you. That's actually the best way to put it. But but this Motoko is just like beautiful. Like that's actually the way I would describe it. Like sexualization aside, obviously boobs go figure. But no, she's just absolutely gorgeous like this. But anywho, um, oh yeah. So if I end up ghosting over her more than once, don't be too shocked about that. But also like the character designs are just kind of good. It's shocking actually. <laughs> anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into the game proper. I'm going to try to not hold us up here too long, but there's some things I do want to mention. Also, I guess, corny thing, um, while we were going through that little intro sequence, I reminded of this song from Meatloaf, The Future Ain't What It Used To Be. That might sound very stupid, but really, really, really think about it. The way we perceive the future in the 90s is different from how we perceive the future now, you know what I mean? Like, back then, everything was, like, cyberized and, like, super gritty looking. Now it's like we think of the future. It's like everything's so minimalist. You know what I mean? It, it's just the way our, our society is. There's a, I think there's an actual word for this. Like th the future we perceived back in the 1950s, like super different from how we even looked at in like the 70s and the 80s. It's kind of interesting actually. But anywho, yeah, let's go ahead and actually jump into the game now. Um, first of all, I would like to mention, make mention that with this save file, I've actually got my way to do as much of the game as I possibly could by myself. That is to say, I've played a lot of the training mode. I'll cover the training mode more later, but just so you guys know, I have, if you've gone to Game Facts before for this game, yeah, I've, um, I put, oh wait, no, wrong. Right, <laughs> wrong, right, right, wrong, sorry. Right, this game's weird. You have to actually manually load your progress. But it, it's weird. I've never seen a PS2 game do this. It usually just boots up your progress from the word go, but this one does not do that for some inane reason. I'm not sure why. But if we go over to... Do, 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 do. Yeah, ranking score. I've, um... <laughs> I've put in some damn work. Like, really. If we, no, that's not it. God, I always get confused with this damn menu. Yeah, because, like, movie replays is, for some reason, over in options. I don't know why, but as you can see, I've done some work. There is a cheat code to unlock all the rest. But that's where also one other thing. All these movies you see here are actually available on Laserdisc. The reason that's important is because you the movies you'll see here are fairly choppy and don't look amazing. But if you see the Laserdisc version on YouTube, absolutely stunning. You see the actual full like they take the Laserdisc disc version and upscale it. It looks actually pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and rock and roll. Also, unfortunately, I have to be very quiet for this because the audio mixing is terrible <laughs> God. i'm gonna do my best in post to make sure you guys can hear the audio properly but the sound mixing for these are wretched there's no subtitles so i'm gonna have to try and not talk over every the dialogue as much as i possibly can it's going to it's gonna be awkward let me just say that well i say it but most of the time i will actually say something thanks for the ride yeah, a wonderful cool thing is the fact that mo all the do all the voice actors actually do carry over straight from the movie itself. I heard about explosives training. Yeah, the whole group spent the night trapped in a restroom. Poor babies. This occurred 40 minutes ago. Wait a minute. I've seen this building somewhere before. Hey, ain't that the Megatech Body Corporation? Yes. 18 people were severely injured when 50 grams of C6 were detonated. Some group calling itself the Human Liberation Front claims responsibility. Hmm, so they want to liberate us. Okay, I'm going to pause this really fast just for this. 
So I've done a little bit of research into the game's story. Um, it's a little bit weird. Um, it loosely covers the the human liberation front, which I tried googling it. There wasn't too much about it from the game. It's uh, from the show itself. It's where it was from somewhere, at least in standalone complex or like in the beginning of the movie. But no, I the most I'm seeing from Google is just like its presence is in this game. I'm like, huh. Am I misremembering this? I have no idea. Um, Alzheimer's hitting me early at 30, I guess. Huh? Real terrorists. This was not an amateur stunt. Their communique was released directly onto an encrypted security net. These are pros with hacking skills. Were they traced? The transmission originated from multiple locations in the Bay Area. That's where we're headed right now. The equipment is A4. We expect an ambush, so memorize the layout. It's a big mission. I'm sure it's a trap. I've just got a feeling. I'll bet you check under the bed at night before you go to sleep. Just, you man, Saito's just not the same unless he's you voice, being voiced by Kakashi. Ah, uh, take him off, you moron. Oh, one other thing. God, she's fucking beautiful. Um, the the fact that the Fujikomas actually have I, they're called Fujikomas in this game, right? I'm pretty sure I got the correct. Yeah, they're Tachikomas in standalone complex. I'm pretty sure the predecessor red ones are Fujikomas, which. Actually, it's funny. In Ghost of the Shell Rise, there's a whole subplot where you can't ride inside of them. Um, and they actually, and Bato has to keep t uh, hammering people about, can we get some damn cockpits inside of these things? That's, that's really cute. But also, um, where was I going with this plot? Right. Tachikoma is in Salem Complex. Fujikoma is in the original show. Pretty neat. Also, God, I'm going to be drooling over a lot. Fujikoma, just do your job and help the rookie. <laughs> I'm going to have to raise and lower the OBS audio manually a lot. So, uh, you're actually not playing as any of the main characters directly. You're not playing as... Yeah, I, I wish I was playing with Kusanagi here so I could look at it more, but... No, you play as an actual unnamed dude named just going by the rookie. You are literally a self-insert into Section 9. Kind of funny, but it is what it is. Yeah, Alex literally put it best. The rookie has no design. He's a completely off-screen character that you uh you destroy through. There are four key codes needed to enter the building. Take out the targets positioned along the outer perimeter in order to obtain the codes. Roger and out. I'm picking up a lot of dispersed light dead ahead. And judging by the heat emissions, it's a combat signature. All units prepare to engage. Yeah, also there's no subtitles for either the movies or th those opening screens. So you, you one thing I've never really liked about Ghost of the Shell, first name Rookie, last name Rookie. Yeah, thank you, Billy. So one issue with the, this game especially is the fact that, um, or rather no, one issue that just kind of plagues Ghost of the Shell overall is like the pacing can be a little shotgunny sometimes. That, that's to say sometimes they front look, they just info dump you. And if you miss something, they're not going to come back to it. So you really got to pay attention. This game, the speed it goes at, it's really bad about that. So you really got to pay attention. Um, loosely speaking, um, I believe there's a, um, yeah, I, I believe terrorists are just taking over a port. Just like the PS2 game's first level. Actually, very interesting. So we got to go ahead go ahead and take it out. Or take care of them, I suppose. Now, here's where we actually had some fun. This is probably not the kind of game you're expecting, huh? No, this is actually a kind of mech game in a sort of speaking let me go ahead and walk you through this because there's no hand holding really for any of this game i expect you to kind of just jump in as one of those ps1 games where if you don't have the manual you're kind of hand boned let me just take you through what we got so a square button is your machine guns um if you have a lock on someone you're able to just it just immediately homes in on them otherwise it generally just use straight l1 and r1 both let you straight left and right as well as l2 and r2 if you hold both of them, you can dash forward. If you hold both of them also, you can dash backwards, depending on your direction. Um, you can't, it's a little hard to try to like chain forward dashes into side dashes, but it makes do. Now I'm going to walk you through what makes this game particularly nuts. <laughs> Maybe we're expecting that, were ya? Yeah, this is actually one of, I think, the most advanced third person shooters I've ever played, actually. This, this is actually kind of insane. Like, I'm, I'm trying to not be overly hyperbolic about this game, but I've never really seen, with the core exceptions of like, maybe I think Titanfall, but I think that was like more, yeah, right, Bailey? With the core exceptions of like maybe Titanfall and maybe a couple of other games I'm not thinking of, like playing Genji, I think, in Overwatch, you never really have 
any sort of like freedom of movement like this. I'm not kidding. You can stick like this to anything. You can chain movement systems out the ass. I, <laughs> this, this game is so fucking fun. You can uh, chain jumps out of side dashes. You can uh, chain forward, chain to like whatever kind of other missions, uh, things you want. Uh, further things about uh, controls, hold square while you have an enemy in your sights. You, you'll start to begin to lock onto them. Release it and you'll uh, release it. However, it's, you do lose it, unfortunately. You do lose, lose the charge if you don't fire in time. Wall crawling shooter, I've never seen that before. Yeah, no kidding. You can't dash straight into a wall crawl, but you can dash while you're crawling along assignment and jump off of them. I'm not... This is so weirdly advanced for a PS1 game. Like, PS1 games... Remember, this is the same console that... It literally created the idea of using the right analog stick in order to change your first person view in a first person view game. That was Alien. That was actually Alien Resurrection, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> that was sick. All right, uh, circle is also your grenades. Uh, they're basically kind of like your BFG shots if you're familiar with Doom at all. Um, anyway, yeah, so you can also get granular with this too. You can do this, jump off, attach to another wall, climb up it. I'm not, uh, dude, the, the, sh the movement system in this game is absolutely crazy. In fact, you know what? I was going to say this for a bit later, but I'm going to do this now. Uh, something I've been doing in every one of my Let's Plays now is going over the, what is effectively like the e efficacy of pirating these, these games. This one, do it. Fucking do it, dude. This game, this has never been released to other platforms digitally or for physical resale. So there's no real legal way of doing it. It feels like there's a, nothing but a boatload of love put into this game, so it'd feel like a shame if no one else got to experience this, you know what I mean? Also, the price tag is fucking insane. Like, literally, we're talking $100 plus dollars on, like, almost every online retailer. By all means, go to CD Romance. I'll leave a link down in the description below. You should absolutely experience this game for yourself. It is what I think is one of the best games I've ever covered for this channel. Purely in terms of gameplay. <laughs> like, I'm not... Okay. I haven't really been too much for like third person shooters my, myself over the years but I've been softening my stance on it overall but this game really takes it up to 11 all right let's see where's the key cards right you, uh radar down your bottom right you gotta keep track of it in order to find your targets and stuff like that stuff like that uh your green the green bar you see uh circling your radar itself is your health I'm not sure what the green pulsing bit on top though is. I've never actually been able to find out. It might be like energy shields or something. I've actually am not entirely sure myself. All right, let's see. Where is it? Also, by the way, you take no fall damage. So by all means, go have a fucking field day with this. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. There's a reason I've been looking forward to do this game, uh, doing this game heavily. It's because of shit like this. Like this is such a fun, robust game. And I genuinely think with some more, if this got a sequel, this could have been one of the absolute best PS1 games. Like, period. One of the core complaints about this game, unfortunately, though, is that the boss fights are really easy. Like, so, I ah, get to Kapacha out there, go figure. Like, I'm not really joking. Right now, I'm just kind of hammering uh, the machine guns. I shouldn't be doing that necessarily. I should be constantly locking on. Yeah, look, we're going to play uh, Jump Rope. Yeah, he hasn't really given me a reason to not spam this. It's, this is why I'm not 100% sold if this actually is the same studio that made Bloodborne or like Shadow of the Colossus. Because I feel like this. <laughs> it's um, it's a little simple, but also I guess PS1 games just kind of have a stigma of just having super easy um, bosses as well. The only one I can immediately think of as an example is like Final Fantasy VII and like Symphony 9, I guess. But I don't know. Also Crash Bandicoot, pretty easy.